Before I begin, I want to give a quick reminder that customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services currently available. Hello everyone and welcome. I am Satya Sekar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. In this series, we will start with the basics of cloud computing, fundamentals of Salesforce platform and then we will explore various features and a spectrum of tools. Today, I will show you how to build an application on the cloud with the Salesforce platform without writing a single line of code. So let's get started. Let's get started by first understanding cloud computing. The applications that run on the internet uses client server technology. The client sends a request to the server, the server processes the request and returns the results as a response. The client can be a small program or application that is running on your local device. The server program runs on a remote machine. For example, you can search for a YouTube video on your mobile. The YouTube app or browser on your mobile is the client. It sends the search keyword as a request. You get a list of videos as a response. In general, the machine that runs the server program itself can be called as a server. It can run one or more services. A cluster of such servers can be called a cloud. The collection of all these services can be called cloud computing. These cloud computing services are classified as platform as a service, in short called PaaS, software as a service called SaaS, and infrastructure as a service called IaaS. Platform as a service provides the development environment and tools as a service to build the applications. Software as a service provides the built applications as a service that you can use for example, Gmail. Infrastructure as a service provides the hardware and system software as a service. When you are working on a Salesforce platform, you need not worry about getting these services separately. Salesforce provides a pass for building your applications and SaaS for provisioning your applications. Salesforce provides a spectrum of tools with which you can build applications faster. It offers visual interfaces to create applications without writing code. It also provides tools with which you can build applications by writing a small amount of code. You can also make the applications by extensively writing the code. You can use a variety of these combinations to build the applications. We will be covering some of these tools and features in this series. Now let's see how to build a typical application. In general, an application has a view, business logic and a database model that falls under model view controller architecture. When a user interacts with the application, say he clicks a button, user action triggers a business logic implemented in a controller, which probably updates the data in the model and that is notified back to the controller and the view is updated. Before we build the application, let's see how the MVC is implemented in Salesforce and compare it with other development platforms so that we can easily understand Salesforce. Let's first compare the model. The relational database table equivalent in Salesforce is called S object, which means Salesforce object. It can also be commonly referred to as object. In most of the other technologies, we create a table, a database object, a domain object, etc. But in Salesforce, there are no such abstractions. You can directly store and retrieve the data from the S object. The column equivalent is field. Each row here is a record like in any other technology. You can also uniquely identify the records using Salesforce ID which is like a primary key. These are the predefined data types used on the Salesforce platform. Now let's see how we can implement the business logic layer. You can implement using no code in which case the platform provides the controllers for the standard functionality like edit, save, etc. You can use drag and drop automation builders to build your workflows. We can also write code on the Salesforce platform using an object oriented language called Apex, which is very similar to Java programming language but much easier to learn. Today we are going to implement without using any code. Let's now see how user interface is implemented in Salesforce. Salesforce provides a rich user experience with its modern front-end called Lightning Experience. It is built on component and event-based architecture. 
you can use HTML and modern JavaScript to create rich user experiences. If you don't want to implement your user interface, then Salesforce provides a default user interface called page layout for the records, which we are going to use shortly. Let's now see all of this in action. Here I am in Trailhead Playground. On the left top corner, you can see the app launcher. If I click that, it shows a list of applications that are already available. For example, service, marketing, community, etc. are part of SaaS, Software as a Service. These apps are called standard apps as Salesforce provides these apps out of the box with the platform. You can customize these applications as per the business requirements of your customers. It is worth noting that anything provided by Salesforce is called standard and anything you build is called custom. For example, we have standard apps, standard objects, standard fields, etc. provided by Salesforce. And you can build custom apps, custom objects, custom fields, etc. You can see sales app which has various pages like home, chatter, opportunities, etc. These are called tabs in Salesforce terminology. We can say that an app is a collection of tabs. You can build dashboards for your home page or view a set of records on your contacts page, etc. Today, I want to create a custom app called Showroom to keep track of new vehicles. Okay, let's now create a model. To do that, we can switch to Pass. You can do that by clicking the gear icon on the top right and click Setup. Here you can see a Home and Object Manager tab. On the left hand side of the Home, you can see tools and features that you can use to build and configure your applications. We can create the S objects using Object Manager. If you remember, S object is like a table. Let's create a S object from Object Manager. Let's click Create and select a custom object. Let's call it Vehicle. We'll also give a plural label Vehicles. This plural name can also be a tab name later. Let's give a record name to reference the records uniquely. Let's call it Vehicle ID. We can select the auto number and choose a display format and give the starting number. You can select some optional features to show this object during report creation, track field history, etc. Let's save it. It has created the object and shows the details here. Did you notice the suffix underscore underscore C in the API name? It indicates that this is a custom object. For standard objects, we don't have that underscore underscore C for the API name. One important thing about objects in Salesforce is that whenever you create the object, the data entry and view screens for the object data are created automatically. We'll see it soon. Okay, let's create some fields. Let me select fields and relationships. You can notice that there are already some fields named created by, lost modified by, etc. These are the standard fields because those are provided during object creation by the platform itself. Let's create a vehicle model field. Click new and select data type as text and click next. We are in step two where we can enter details of the field. We can give label model and length 50. You can make it mandatory by selecting the required checkbox. Let's keep all things default for now and click next. In this step, you can establish field level security. You can select who has access to this field. You'll learn more about field level security in our upcoming video on security, which is probably the fifth video in this series. For now, let's keep it default and click next. In this last step, you are adding this field to the page layout. You'll learn more about page layouts in the next video. So let's click save and new to add more fields. Let's add a price field, which can be currency. Its length can be eight with two decimal places. Let's keep all other things default and click save and new. Similarly, you can add more fields with different data types like pick list, 
email, geolocation, etc. Let's add one more field for import date, which can be a date field. We can keep the rest of the things default and save. You can see all our fields created. Let's now create a tab for our object where we can show the records. If you remember, it is similar to the page of an application. To do that, we can go to home in our setup and open tabs. Here, we can create a new custom object tab. Click new and it launches a wizard. We are in step one where we can select the object. Let's choose the vehicle. You can now select a style for our tab which includes a color theme. Let's choose a car. Click next. In this step, you can select who all can see your tab. You can learn more about this in our fifth video, which is about security. The default is on for all. So let's stick to the default and click next. You can add this tab to an app. We haven't created our app yet. So we'll not add it to any of the apps by unchecking this include tab. Let's click save and you can see that our tab is created. So far, we have created the object, fields and tab. Let's now go ahead and create an app. To do that, let's open app manager by typing app manager in the search. You can see a list of apps already provided by Salesforce. These are the standard apps. Let's create a custom app by clicking the new lightning app button. Let's give the app name as showroom. You can also add an image of your app branding, which can be a logo. Let's click next. And here you can define whether your app is only available for desktop or even mobile. Note that your app can be instantly mobile with the Salesforce platform. You need not create a separate mobile app. Let's click next. You can add any utility items if available. Let's keep it default and click next. Here, you can add any of the standard or custom tabs. Let's add our vehicles tab that we have just created and click next. We are currently logged in as system administrator. So let's give access to this app to system administrator by selecting that profile. Let's save and finish. Our app is now ready to test. We can launch our app using the app launcher. Click app launcher icon and search with the app name and select it. If you forgot the app name, do not worry. You can find it by clicking view all. It is too early to forget the app name. So I'll search for it. Here you can see the vehicles tab. Let's create a new vehicle. Did you notice that we haven't created the input form for this yet? It is available. As I mentioned earlier, these data entry screens are created automatically when we created the object. Give a model name, price and date of import. You can create one more record with save and new. Let's enter some values and click save. Here you can see the details of the vehicle. This view screen is also automatically created. You can also customize these pre-created screens that will be covered in our next video. We can also create relationships between the S objects, just like we do between the tables in a relational data model. For instance, I want to keep track of the test drives of a vehicle and a vehicle can have one or more test drives, in which case we can create a one to many relationship between the vehicle and the test drives. Let's see how we can do that on Salesforce platform. We can create one-to-one, one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships between the objects in Salesforce. For our scenario, it can be a one-to-many relationship. Here, one vehicle can have one or more test drives. In this case, a vehicle can be considered as parent and test drive can be considered as a child, which means one parent can have many children. We can create the relationship by creating the custom relationship field in the child object, which stores the ID of the parent. Note that relationship fields will always be created in the child object. Now let's see with an example. Say we have a vehicle of model one with an ID of 00001 in the vehicle object. 
When we create a test drive record for this vehicle, it stores the vehicle ID as the parent ID in the test drive record. Similarly, if we create one more record, it stores the same vehicle ID as the parent ID. If we create a test drive for the second vehicle, it stores the second vehicle ID as parent ID. We can create two types of one-to-many relationships, lookup and master detailed relationship in Salesforce. One fundamental difference between the lookup and master detail relationship is that in the lookup relationship, when a parent record is deleted, its child records are not deleted. On the other hand, in master detail relationship, when a parent record is deleted, all its child records are deleted. This is called a cascading delete. In the lookup relationship, children can have their own sharing and security settings while it is inherited from the parent record in master detail. There are few more differences based on which you can decide which type of one-to-many relationship is suitable for your requirement. In our scenario, there cannot be any test drives without the vehicle. And also, when the vehicle record is deleted, there is no use in storing the related test drives. So the master detail relationship fits our requirement. Okay, let's now create this relationship by creating a child object. I'm back in playground and let's open the object manager. Create a new custom object and let's call it test drive. Let's give the record name as test drive ID with auto number. Save it. We'll now create a couple of fields. Let's create a text field called customer name. Create a time slot of date time type for the drive. Now it's time to create a relationship field. For our requirement, we can select master detail relationship. Now you can select the parent object. Let's choose the vehicle. And for field name, we can enter vehicle and click next. We can leave the rest of the options as default and save. You can see that the relationship field is created. That's it. Let's go and test it. Let's open a vehicle record and add a test drive. Here in the related tab, you can see test drives. We can create a new test drive by filling in the details. You can create more test drives if you want. And if you open this record, you can see that it is related to a vehicle. And also notice that this field value is a link. If we click that link, it navigates to the vehicle details. In this video, you learned the basics of cloud computing, fundamentals of Salesforce platform, how to build the data model, how to create relationships, and also build a fully functional Salesforce application without writing a single line of code. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section of this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them there too. We'll be happy to answer those questions. Thank you for watching and please like the video if it is valuable and connect with us on our social channels. If you want to get more content like this pushed directly to you, Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications. Thank you.